Hello everyone! Thank you for watching all of my videos. I am here again today. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to send me an email and for sending me an audio or even for sending me a video. So this is wonderful that we can be in contact like this and I hope that you are all safe and well in your homes with your family. And yeah, I'm here today to talk about the mistakes from last week's video or the week before Holy Week. Did you have a nice Holy Week, a nice Easter? Did you enjoy? Did you eat lots of sweets and have fun with your family? Okay, so many things I want to talk about. First of all, the first sentence. So the first sentence was, we haven't time for us. This is incorrect, okay? Incorrect. This is one of my favorite mistakes, which I see all the time. In school, you typically study British English, okay? In British English, if you want to say tener, you use the verbs have got, right? In American English, we just use the verb have, which I think is easier, but okay. So it's difficult to use have got because many times students forget to put the got or also have got doesn't work in the past tense. So if you want to say, Tuve un coche rojo, or tenía un coche rojo. Um, you must say, I had a red car, not I had got a red car, okay? Also, have got doesn't work in the future. So if you want to say, tendré un coche rojo, you would say, I will have a red car, and not I will have got a red car, okay? So basically, you must be really careful with have got. Use it only when talking about the present and don't forget the got, okay? We haven't got time for us is correct. Or you can forget the got totally and use the American English have and say, we don't have time for us. So that is also correct. Okay, number two. Even though I had some bad days, there were good days too. So here we had a spelling mistake. And um, I laughed a lot because more than one person decided to fix this sentence by saying, even though I had some bad days, there were two good days, which is technically also correct. Um, but I think that the student wanted to say something different, probably. Um, this was just a spelling mistake. So what is the difference between two, two, and two? Okay, we've probably talked about this at school. Um, many times in English, we have words that sound the same and are spelled differently. So these are called homophones, homophones, because they, they sound the same, the same pronunciation, but the spelling is different. So like two, también, two, dos, or to, which is like a preposition and has many meanings, like Asia or a. Ah. So there are many other examples of homophones. For example, there, 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 or sale, sale, or night, night, sell, sell, meet, meet, break, break, um, die, die, flower, flower, Mm, many here, here, like here and here, okay? So many, 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 C and C, uh, sun and sun. So, okay, those are just some examples of homophones in English. Number three, number three was my family and I read together. So again, this was a spelling mistake. It should be my family and I read together, but R-E-A-D, right? So this sentence, could be in the present tense, my family and I read together, or in the past tense, my family and I read together. So notice that the pronunciation is different, but the spelling is the same, okay? So someone corrected the sentence by saying, um, my family and I read together, but R-E-D. So this is an example now of a homograph. Okay, so homographs are words that are spelled the same but have different meanings. Okay, so heteronyms 
are a type of homograph that are spelled the same and have different meanings. No, spelled the same, different meanings, and different sounds, okay? So, read and read are heteronyms. Um, we also have bass, like the bass guitar, el bajo, right? Or bass, which is a fish. So depending on how you pronounce it, you can say bass, which is a fish, or bass, like the guitar. Um, we have console, like the video console, like video games, or to console someone, to make them feel better, to console someone. Uh, many examples, we have lead, or lead, or uh, minute, which is very, very small, or minute, uh, rebel, or to rebel, so rebel is the person, to rebel is the verb. Uh, record, like let's listen to a record. Or I need to record this information or record this video. So record is a verb and record is a noun. Okay, then we have tear, which is like to rip something, to tear. Or tear, which is a, a lagrima. Okay? Okay, so number four, number four. We have ended knowing each other more and more each day. Okay, this is incorrect, and the correct sentence would be, we have ended up, ended up, getting to know each other more and more each day. So this sentence has two mistakes. Okay, two mistakes. So it could either, it has to be end up, which is a phrasal verb, okay? And the phrasal verb means acabarse, like to end up doing something, so end up. And the second mistake is with knowing. Knowing or get to know. So what is the difference between to meet, to get to know, and to know? Okay, so in Spanish, all the words are the same. It's just conocer. In English, we use three different words. So to meet is conocer la primera vez. To get to know is like the process of, of knowing someone, like um, ir conociendo, sabiendo más sobre una persona. And then to know is when you finally know someone. Okay? Okay. Number five. The only bad thing is the fear to the virus. So this sentence is incorrect because of the preposition. Yes? So the only bad thing is the fear of the virus. Someone else said the only bad thing is the spread of the virus. This is also correct, so good job. And number six, I pass more time with my family. I pass more time? No. I spend more time with my family. So this one is incorrect because the word pass is not the same in Spanish and English. So pass means like aprobar, an exam or like to physically pass by the window or to pass, but you want to say spend, like to spend time or to spend money, right? So yeah, spend time with my family. Okay, very good. So those were all the sentences from last week. How did you do? Pretty good, right? I think most of you had some corrections there. Good, okay, so homework for next week. So here are Mm, let's see, we have four sentences, four sentences for this week's homework, and I want you to send me an email with the corrections, or just send me an email saying, hello, Nicole, how are you? It's a beautiful day today, or whatever you want, but send me an email, and then I will tell your teacher that you sent an email. Um, so here are the sentences, and that's it. So I hope that you have a wonderful week, and I will see you soon. Bye.